be known, sons and daughters, that Satan was an appetite. Drink from his cup. Pledge yourselves. And together we'll all freak out. Hello. Welcome back to the Back Better Eye Channel. Jason here. Um, so I thought I'd come on and show some stuff that I've been listening to over the past way. This is all hard rock, um, psych, prog stuff. Most of it's from the late 60s, um, early 70s. So, um, yeah, I just thought I'd come on and show some of the stuff we listened to. Most of this over the past few months. So, um, yeah. Uh, shout out to my friend Francis who sometimes watches this. Uh, I hope you're keeping well, my man. Um, give me a shout. Anyway, so yeah, prog, hard rock, psychedelic stuff. So, first up, Magic Ship. Um, it's from 19. Is it 69 or 70? I'm not too sure, but great record. This uh, this sort of record I can. I can play it any time, sort of in any mood or whatever. It's just really good direct songs. Um, great slices of like false rock guitar on it too as well, you know. Some really good hard rock songs on it. Some of the more popular elements are brilliant too. The songs are really direct and just really easy to get into. And um, stuff on like this like open track, Sioux City Blues and uh, Life's Lonely Road's really good. We Gotta Live On I really like as well. They do a medley on this as well with two songs to put it together, a wee medley of like Down by the River by Neil Young and uh, What It's Worth by Buffalo Springfield. Two songs I like anyway, it works for me, you know. Um, I really like Buddy May's version of uh, Down by the River. But yeah, really, really good record to say. It's a lot butter to me, I can listen to it at any point. It's really, really good. Magic Ship, I think it's from 69. Uh, Puba, Let Me In, when this came out, 73 or something. Um, but what a cracking little album this is. Um, so this has some brilliant crunchers on it, doesn't it? Really driving hard rock and some of it. Um, even like, uh, what do you call it, second song again? Enjoy what you have. Can't read in here, it's so dark. Um, but yeah, even that's like a mellow, trippy song. But most of it is just really good, hard drive and hard rock. And a uh, cracking, cracking little album. Pooba, let me in. I was talking to Keith at uh, Attack from Down Under. And he was saying he has the, a reissue of it, which has a uh, gift fold and some cool bonus tracks and stuff on it. Next up is Fat. This came out in 1970 um, on RCA Records. This is brilliant. I love this record. Um, this got brilliant, soulful, bluesy, bluesy vocals on it. Love this guy's voice. Um, this is worth it even for the, the, the two opening tracks. Um, House on the Corner and the amazing Black Sunday. Black Sunday is such a tune, I love it. Um, got a real, similar to Asley, has a sort of southern rock sound to me a bit. Um, uh, Get some hard rock moments on it. It's got a real rural sound as well. Um, but this guy's voice is fantastic. It's, it's worth picking up even just for the the uh, the song Black Sunday, I think. Anyway, what do you think of it? Um, Fat RCA. Uh, I bought this back in like probably around 2006, 2007. Um, a guy recommended this to me because this didn't, what I'd heard about this album, a lot of people didn't talk highly of it. Um, so, but I'm glad I, I listened to him and I, uh, I bought it off him. It was really cheap. Always has been a cheap record. Um, but it, what else is on this? Like, Mine Eyes Have Seen, Lonely Lady, Country Girl's really good. Shape I'm In's a class song, the opening of the B-side. Um, but, say, Black Sunday has to be one of my favorite songs. Um, well, it's my favorite song in this album. It's one of my favorite songs of that period. I love that track. So yeah, Fat RCA came out in 1970. This is a new one to me, Eden's Children. I think this came out in 68. I think this band popped out two albums of that on that, that year. Um, this record, I picked it up in a charity shop maybe about four months back. Never heard the band before. And uh, sure looks really cool this by Eden's Children. Um, and this is really, really enjoyable. 
when I bought this, picked it up, it was a nice sunny day, and this hit the spot big space, gets some sunshine, sort of psychedelic pop, pop rock on it. Um, ball of vibe of the day, you know. It's got some blast fuzz guitar on it. Um, it's really good, stuff like uh, Come When I Call is a brilliant sort of track. And the last track, Echoes, is really good as well. Um, enjoy all of this, this LP, so really glad I picked this up. This originally came out on ABC Records. Um, in 68, so yeah, Eden's Children sure looks real. Pulse, excuse me, I think this came out, is this 69 as well? Um, my missus bought me this for, it must be my 35th birthday or something. I've been looking for this record for a long time, and she bought me it, it's really chuffed, but brilliant psychedelic blues rock. Um, Hypnotize is brilliant on this. Another Woman is an amazing track as well. Um, Garden of Love, My Old Boy, tracks like that. Brilliant, uh, bluesy, psychedelic rock. Pulse, I think it's a 79, maybe 70, or 69 maybe. Yeah, I think it's 69. Pulse, Andromeda, a classic, right? John DeCon's band, before Atomic Rooster and the brilliant hard stuff. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, this record here, I picked this up um, about four months back in a charity shop as well as that Eden's Children LP and there's another two here I think I picked up at the time. Um, I already had this on LP but this is a um, like a 90s reissue of it on uh, EMF records and what a brilliant, brilliant slice of early uh, progressive heavy rock. Um, some amazing lit up guitar on this. Uh, if, if you listen to this, I can say this, Face 2 as they call it on this, and um, Return to Sanity, where they take um, that sort of Paul Smars theme, and they batter it with really heavy guitars, and you can really hear the birth of heavy metal in it. Uh, it's like Diamond Heads on My Evil before, and a uh, brilliant record from 69. I love hard stuff, Atomic Rooster and all that sort of gear, but yeah, good to hear this again. I'm glad I picked up this early reissue of it. When I seen this in the Shardy shop, I just seen the cover poking through from other records and I went, it couldn't be. It couldn't be the, uh, the original RCA record, um, and it wasn't. But it was really cheap, there was no way I was leaving it there, so yeah. Andromeda, Burnet record. Aorta, it's the, another one I picked up in that Shardy shop a few months back. And if you want this one on vinyl for a while, um, this is like a 90s reissue of it. Uh, but the reason that this bomb's on my radar was because this is the guitar pair that... This is um, a Dunwich Productions uh, band produced by Bill Trott, who done that Common album, the debut one. Um, Witchcraft destroys minds and reaps souls. And Bill Trump brought this guy in, the guitar player for this band, to write some songs for Coven for that LP. Coven had a couple of songs to go for the LP, but he brought him in, told him to write some songs for the, for the record, gave him some books apparently on witchcraft and demonology, and off he went, and uh, he wrote the rest of the record. Um, funny enough, He's a little bit embarrassed about it because he, uh, I don't know whether he's born again Christian, so he never mentioned the LP. He a bit of shamed of it, and he basically said that nothing ever good happened with the release of that album. So, uh, but yeah, this is really good, sort of early progressive stuff, um, psychedelic, and um, has a, like a main theme running through it, uh, and it's got amazing playing on jazz, rocky sort of stuff. Very, very good. Um, well worth hearing if you haven't heard it, but uh, most of these, if you're into psych, hard rock from that period, you'll probably have heard all these records. But yeah, I order. Here's one I forgot about, I have played in the way, Galactic Food. So this is basically, um, this came out in 1970, and this is um, guys who played in Lucifer's Friend and uh, Asterix, bands like that. So you can imagine, it's got really good, if you haven't heard it, it's got really good heavy rock and stuff on it. More famous for the fact that it opens up with a cover of uh, Whole Lot of Love by Led Zepp. Um, 
but I really love Nosferatu from this record, a real gloomy track, and um, if you like Lucifer's Friends, stuff like that, it's worth checking out if you haven't checked it out. Uh, yeah, 1970 from Germany, and it's got some brilliant playing on it, some really good heavy numbers on it too, but to say Nosferatu off this, I really, really love. Uh, Power of Zeus, and the Gospel According to Zeus, so this came out in 1970, on the Rare Earth label, Motown's sub label. My brother gave me this a few months back. Um, I already had this on CD for years. Really, really enjoy the record, but I was really glad that he gave me this final copy of it. And yeah, it's it's brilliant. It's got a real uh, 70s UK sound to me. Loads of organ and stuff on it. Even like the metal tracks like yeah, Green grass and clover are alright, like, but it's got the death trips on here, um, the sorcerer of Isis, the ritual of time mode. Um, brilliant opening track as well. Class heavy rock with Brent Hammond organ and stuff all the way through. Really, really good album. Far Zeus, American Band. This is another one I picked up in that charity shop. It's Glass Prison. Um, on Joy and Sorrow. Uh, never heard this band before, and this is really good. I really enjoyed this as well. This has got loads of great sort of late '60s tunes on it. Uh, loads of harmonies, some organ, um, dashes of fuzz guitar in it. And the reason I picked this up because it looked a wee bit more gothic than usual. You know, with the, the purple on it, the name of the the album, and has a poem on the back of it. But I love this. Um, yeah, Glass Prison, really good, really easy to get into, psychedelic rock from the period, so I think this came out, this is maybe 1970 as well. Um, maybe a bit too loud, is uh, Hawk, or Joburg Hawk, South African Frog Band, this came out in 73 or 72 I think. This is one of those cheap records that you can, you can get for a few pounds. Uh, I picked it up because of this cover. Picked this up years back. Um, but I think this is a underrated little record. The plan on this thing is absolutely fucking fantastic. Uh, the last time I listened to this, I put it on the YouTube community feed. And I shared some thoughts on the first time I heard the record. And to me, it sounded like a mixture of Richie Havens. Uh, Richie, all I said was sounded like Richie Havens. Hump and Jeff Rotol at a Black Widow concert. Brilliant. Um, some class heavy prog on this too, like um, great rhythms. Say South African band. Multiracial band too. Caused them a lot of hassle as you can imagine. Playing live or whatever. They could only play with the white members. All I just like we can imagine what was going on then. So yeah, but this is usually you can usually pick it. If you haven't heard it, didn't you see this about? It's only a couple of pounds. It's not a dear record and I think it's an underrated LP. It's got brilliant tracks on it. It's all about Africa and it's really superb. Amazing playing on it. Uh, Granicus. So, when you're moving. This has got some cracking um, 70s riff rock on it. This guy's voice has got that Zeppelin, uh, Pablo's dog, Rush. He's, got, he's in that register, that pitch and really, really enjoyable. Like, yeah, Grand, I guess, really good record. I was listening to this on Friday night. Um, Galong, Radio Gnome, Invisible Part 1, Flying Teapot. Uh, came out in 73, I think. This is brilliant. These boys go right for it, go right out, and you can tell they're genuine. And I'm really into it. The plan on it's amazing. It's just quirky, psychedelic. Yeah, the musicianship is out of this world on this, literally. It's just, you tell these boys are on a psychedelic journey, and it's for real, it's not just a fad. Um, like, you can you hear all these bands, and they do psych and stoner music and stuff, and you know they have to talk the joint in their life, you know? Not these boys, these boys are out there. Um, this, brand, this reminds me, me and my uh, missus, our first house we had together, and people coming over, maybe stick a song, there's always good vibes on this record. Um, Brilliant, go on, flying keeper, radio, oh no, superb album. Um, Green Eyed God by Steve Mill, 
way this came out. This originally came out in 72, this is a uh, race I picked up years back, must be about five years ago I picked this up or something. Um, but brilliant UK prog that has a lot of uh, real dark, riffy moments on it. Um, it's got some brass rock on it and some flute or whatever, it's superb. There's a couple of uh, bonus tracks on this, fantastic album. Uh, Green Eyed God by Steel Mill, enjoyed hearing that again. This classic, eh? Uh, the Court of the Crimson King. Uh, yeah, revisiting this again. And my my brother um, let me hear this in my teens. He gave me a CD of it, uh, and I absolutely fell in love with it. I mean, it's got epitaph on it, hasn't it? And what 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 do you say about this that hasn't been said five thousand times? This is such an important, influential album to the point now where you know people are going, oh, it's a bit overrated and stuff. The way it happens with big, big albums like this, you know. Um, I think people like that are talking out of their arse. It's an amazing LP. Uh, SVB, Polish Prog. Picked this up in the charity shop um, months back, and this rocks like crazy. Um, brilliant progressive, jazzy rock. Um, goes into some real heavy places. Some brilliant riffs on it. I've really, really enjoyed this. You can tell it's Polish because it's one of those flimsy pancake fall apart easy record sleeves. Um, Burnett SBB. This is going to be a record I've heard, I own by this band. I heard bits and pieces of them online. Um, so th this was like, I think this was £2 or something. It was like this and that's staying there. Um, I was blown away with this really. It's fucking really, really good. SBB, if you like. Um, really good heavy prog in places, it's amazing. Um, Clearlight, uh, Black Roses, this is a, an album that doesn't have any of that um, obscurity cool to go with it unfortunately, um, because it's a very common rock chord. When I started to explore uh, psychedelic music, bands like this, I picked this rock chord up and like Fever Tree because they were everywhere, you could pick them up really cheap. Um, but this is really good. Well, it starts off with Black Roses, and um, sounds of Brent's psych uh, rock track. Chad Smile reminds me of love. But then, out of the blue, just lands Street Singer, which I think is an old um, folk song, which I, ha I don't think I've heard the original of it. Um, I don't think it sounds anything like this, this though, because this, that's a really heavy track, like Pro Stoner Doom. Um, it just comes out of nowhere. But I was like, what the fuck is this? Brilliant, brilliant track, Street Singer. But the rest of this is really good. Um, brilliant psychedelic rock. But check out that track if you're into heavier track and the heavier sounds from that period. Um, Street Singer, my god, cracker. Uh, some riff rock from the 70s, Boangus, when this came out. Uh, I think this is like 71 or something, maybe. Um, you used, this was. One of those rock chords, I've picked up a few copies of this over the years. You can pick them up for a bit of fiber. I would give them to friends or whatever. This has some absolutely amazing riff rock on it. Just really good grooves. Um, what's on this? Like uh, Uncle Doogie's Fun Boss. Brilliant. Uh, Mother's Favorite Lover. Stuff like that. Um, it's got a bit of flute on it. Hammond organ. As the producer says here in the end sleeve, riff rock should be played loud. Yeah. Angus and um, Damnation of Adam Blessed. So, playing this again, not as um, on fire as their uh, their second LP, but um, still really enjoyable. I like the third one as well. Uh, it's not a great LP, but there's a song on it called Sometimes I, which the vocal on it is absolutely amazing. Um, but yeah, this is great. This has got so I like the last song in this lonely. It's really good. It starts off with cookbook. It's got a couple of covers on it, Morning Dew and uh Last Train to Clarksville. But um Strings and Things is really good. Uh, as I say, not as on fire as the second one, but enjoyable to hear again. This one I completely forgot I had. Light My Fire, the Firebirds. This is like a reissue. I picked this up maybe a year back or something in a local shop. This is more known for its uh, sloppy, sort of um, overdriven guitar sound in some 
some songs like a studio cash in band uh, came out in 69 but it's if you like sloppy um, say overdriven guitar sounds it's worth a listen uh, alright one more I'll do this and go because that's what that say the record's over Kinks uh, Lola vs Paramount and the Money Go Round uh, my brother bought me this for one Christmas and great record but this has Rats on it and I absolutely love that song uh, if you haven't heard this check out the song Rats it's a riffy cracker but uh, yeah Kinks anyway catch you soon all the best bye